I, I just want to talk about your blog that is, is so important for California. I had this idea one time of starting something called The Case for California Weather because all my weather friends said, oh, you work in California, you're in early retirement in your 30s. And I said, no, no, no. Every kind of weather happens in California. And you've really made the case that the weather and climate uh, situation in California is really is really big. So how did you get the idea for the blog? And are you surprised how big it's become? Well, thanks for the kind words. You know, I've been writing the California weather blog or the Weather West blog, as it's more commonly known for the better part of 15 years. And it kind of spans, uh, for me personally, a, a, a wide swath of my professional career, getting a degree in atmospheric science and then a PhD in earth system science, and then now actively working as a climate scientist. So it sort of has spanned uh, a bunch of different levels of sophistication, which I think makes it maybe appealing for folks because I, I, I know what people are interested in in terms of the weather. I'm a weather geek myself, um, and I work in the climate space now. So I guess I'm able to sort of bridge some of the weather climate divides that exist um, conceptually and sort of uh, in, in society. So it's something that um, for me personally, it's been really gratifying to really see scale up over the years and now to have the kind of audience that I do, um, it's great. It's, I'm really thrilled that that many people are fascinated by California weather, which as you say, is, is often uh, a little more interesting than folks from outside of California might assume. You know, one of the points that you were making um, is is how how vul is how uh, much variety is in California weather. You know, and, and as meteorologists, we talk about the day to day. It's crazy one day and it's quiet the other day. But the more extremes you get on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly basis, then actually the, the climate is becoming more extreme. And and I thought that what you're talking about for the future of California climate was really important. So if you could. Just point out some of the, the highlights, because two things could be happening at the same time, getting drier and wetter at the same time. Point out some of the extremes we may be looking at in the next 10, 20 years. In California, in a warming climate, there may be a bit of a water paradox. The best available estimates and simulations we have available to us right now suggest that, well, obviously the climate in California will be warmer, but it'll also be increasingly alternating between extreme wet and extreme dry conditions. So even though we may not see a tremendous shift in our overall average precipitation uh, as the climate warms, we do expect to see a large increase in the frequency of both flood and drought. And how can that possibly be? Well, essentially, we already have a highly variable climate in California. We already swing um, every year uh, from what one somebody for outside of California might consider an extreme drought every summer because it never rains in the summer in coastal California and then really wet conditions in the winter. So we already have that extreme seasonality in California that's kind of rare. We also have the seasonality or the extreme variability from year to year. Uh, we have some extremely dry years in California and then also some extremely wet years to begin with. So we already have a highly variable climate. What climate change may bring about is an a further increase in the level of that variability on a bunch of different time scales from year to year, from season to season, from day to day. So we may see not only more wet years and more dry years, but also a shorter but sharper rainy season, less precipitation in the shoulder season in the autumn and spring, which is important for a wildfire risk and ecology in this part of the world, but also maybe a slight increase in the amount of precipitation during the core wet season months when we may see increasingly strong individual atmospheric river storms, which could lead to increased flood risk. All the while, we see less snowpack in the mountains, but more rain. So more quick, more sudden runoff, um, really more variability that's going to be challenging, honestly, to deal with um, from a water supply perspective. So these are the kinds of changes that we expect to see. And, you know, the events we're seeing this week or this month in California are kind of a, an example of the sudden transitions between extreme dry and extreme wet um, that we're talking about. You know, one of the things I thought that you said that was really important is you said, by, by the way, what's happening now was actually in the cars was talked about as, as a very likely future scenario and it's happening now. So I, I feel like it was really important for you to highlight that climate, you know, this climatology here in California forecasting and both reality and, and maybe where we're going, it has been pretty accurate so far. Is that your understanding as well? The two big picture things that have really jumped out um, as things that that, you, that were previously predictions a couple of decades ago and have now become reality in California are the level of warming that we've seen was 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 predicted and the fact that we would see 
um, a, a substantial loss in snowpack by the early part of, of the 21st century. Well, now that's what we're seeing in the real world. We're seeing the, the early science of the snowpack is starting to decline, especially at lower elevations. There have been predictions that the severity of wildfires in California would increase. And they have. They've actually increased a little bit faster than predictions had earlier suggested. But the direction of change is all quite consistent with the predictions that have been made um, as many as 20 or 30 years ago in some cases regarding what California's future climate would look like. So today we're making these predictions about increased precipitation variability and increased flood and drought risk. I would say 20 or 30 years from now, we'll, we'll be able to look back and say, well, were those predictions correct? Um, I suspect that they will be, but I guess I guess we can wait and see. In the meantime, um, we certainly have some examples of that kind of behavior uh, to to sort of uh, uh, take into perspective right now. And my final question, it brings me to my final question, uh, Dr. Swain, is I just really need to know from you, you know, I, I, I'm a meteorologist. I study the weather day to day, but I also have a great understanding and, and history with, with what's going on with the climate. As a father of three kids, you know, what happened this summer when the sun didn't come out one day, when it was 110 degrees for days on end, we were breaking records that hadn't been broken in decades. I have this feeling of responsibility to tell people what's what's going to happen and how to survive it on, on a mental basis for knowing knowing where we're going. So how do you make peace in your mind with sort of the feeling of, existential dread of all these things that just seem so scary and so near to happen here in the state. As you suggest, a lot of it has been overwhelming recently in California. I mean, California has had more than its fair share of climate related disasters and, and other disasters um, in 2020. Um, it's, it's, I think it's been tough for everybody, scientists, uh, scientists included. Uh, but uh, I, I, you know, I think that the, the most optimistic perspective that I, I take these days is that, you know, as, as alarming as our current trajectory is, and as as devastating as some of the recent disasters have been, our future climate, this, this, the final state that we reach is still largely within our collective control uh, as a society, you know, we still have we still get to decide essentially how much more warming there is. There will be some additional warming because we can't stop our our carbon intensive economy and ways of life on a dime. But the faster we can do that, the the better things will be in the future. The less warming there will be, the less increase in climate extremes that we'll actually see. And the good news is it's not too late. Um, it's not irreversible, but we need to act now while we're still in a position to make these changes without them being extremely disruptive. And so now is the time to take that action. Um, and I'm hopeful that we get really serious about it um, in the very short term. All right, Dr. Daniel Swain, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate your time today. Uh, of course, in the past and in the future, we really need to listen to you, what you have to say, because it's important. Not all of it is easy to hear, but like you mentioned at the end, it can be empowering because like you say, it's up to us in many ways. Dr. Da Daniel Swain, thank you so much.